200 backstroke kickstart tonight for Action. Kaylee McEwen, a withering start once again. We've got so many aspiring young swimmers around her and the veteran at 32, Emily Seabong, swimming out of lane six. It hasn't taken Kaylee long to go to the top though. She's already a third of a body length ahead. Hannah Fredericks in lane five, holding down second. And not much between the rest of the field in third position, and Emily Seabom is part of that action. Well, Kaylee McEwen is out, 0.26 under world record pace, her own world record here. So, as you mentioned, Tomo, she's in form. Hannah Fredericks next to her, looking very comfortable in her stroke. She would be well aware that Kaylee is swimming fast and just trying to hold on to that pace in any way that she can, knowing that Kaylee will drag her to a great time. Oh. But as expected, it's Kaylee all on her own. She's a body, body length. length ahead of the red line. 100 to go. Look at that turn. What a blistering turn by McKillen. She's come up a body length and a half ahead. So she's just lifted her straight rate. Working through this third 50. This is the way she sets up the 200. Really getting the legs involved now. She was 0.15 under her own world record pace at the halfway mark. This is dominance on another level. Kaylee McEwen's two body lengths ahead. MC Bomb, second lane from the bottom there. She's got to get going. She's just slipped behind the red line. Can Kaylee rally and ignite the fans here at Chandler? Come on, Kaylee, find something. She's got the wind parceled up. It's all about the world record. What about this for a margin? She's two, three body lengths ahead. And she's a body length ahead of the red line. Kaylee versus her own. Congratulations, Kaylee, just 0.16 off her own world record. Congratulations to Jacqueline Barclay in lane two. Moved through the field on that final lane. She's finished in second and under qualifying time with a 207.88. She's off to her first Olympics. Kaylee McEwen, another qualifying time, sending yourself off to Paris. Now, I saw you on camera in the marshalling room before the event, and you were looking pretty relaxed in there. Yeah, look, um, the first half of this meet, I've been quite nervous, so I really just wanted to enjoy tonight. So I'm glad you could see that on camera. Yes, certainly could. Now, I know before your 100 metres, you narrowly missed that world record and you narrowly missed it again. You said that you were disappointed with the event after the 100 because you were so close to touching out that world record swim. And I'm sure you heard the crowd roaring you in that last 50. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't hear anything. I was in my own little world. But, um, you know, I've got a ticket to Paris, so... You know, I'm hoping to be on the big stage for that. And Jax, congratulations, your first Olympic team. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, I know that you won a silver medalist earlier this year in the World Swimming Championships. That must have given you a lot of confidence because you swam under the qualifying time all the way back then. How did you manage the expectations over the last few months heading into this competition? Look, I was definitely like just focusing on all I needed to work on in training and this last week I was very nervous so I tried to control it a little bit more for the final and I was really happy with that. I'm sure you were, you're off to the Olympics. <laughs> yeah. All right, Roz, we have someone special for Kaylee here. And whilst I'm having you here, Kaylee, I have a very special gift for you. It's a beanie from the Mark Hughes Foundation. I know that you're an ambassador for this foundation and it's the beanies for brain cancer around at NRL. Are you able to speak to us about what this foundation means to you in such a special moment like this? I thought I'd be able to hold it together. Um, you know, I lost my dad in 2020 to brain cancer, um, just before Olympics. So with every swim that I do, he's always there with me. and. It means a lot to partner with someone. Well, you know, Mark Hughes Foundation, just bring more awareness. There's not a lot of um, funds that go out there. So if I can do my little bit, that's as much as I can do. So I'm proud to represent not only my family, but my dad as well. We know that he's always with you, Kaylee. Congratulations on another Olympic team. And uh, Atlanta in 96 as well. 
and in Sydney 2000 he was ninth overall. So one of our great individual medley swimmers, Matt Dunn, couldn't jag a medal. So we're looking for personal best times from this field. None of these swimmers have swum under the qualifying time before. We need PBs to book our plane ticket to Paris. Smith was first on top of the water into this butterfly. So Bon Lee looks comfortable in lane five, just finding his rhythm in that fly. Quite a large dolphin kick throughout his stroke. He almost... See, Bon actually is the fastest through the first 50. Into the backstroke now. And it is Sabon Lee. About a third of a body length ahead of Brendan Smith. Well, Petrick looks comfortable in lane four and slicked in lane three, not too far away. So a bot less than a body length separates the first four. So the expectation is Will Petrick will pick up in this breaststroke swim, comfortable through the backstroke. Fast finishing in the last pay part of this race. It's a great transition in the backstroke for Will Petrick. And in the twinkling of an eye, he's right up there with Sabon Lee and Brendan Smith. This is turning into quite the race. They're pretty much neck and neck. You have to back Brendan at this stage. We know that he's a 400 IM -er. Bronze medalist at the Olympic level over 400 IM has a wonderful backhand part to his race. So this breaststroke to freestyle turn will be fast. He's got a huge kick when he comes into this freestyle leg. Petrick has taken the front. Lee and Smith right there with him, but Petrick has accelerated in the freestyle. Now keep an eye on the clock. One, five, seven, four, three. See the lines right there. Petrick, he's all out. He's going for it. Will Petrick, the line's just sneaking away from him, but that's a great swim. Oh, he's just outside. That's painfully close. He smashed his personal best, though. That's so impressive from a young man at 19. Oh, 157.54. We're about 0.3 outside qualifying time. Look, I think he's given himself a great chance with selectors with that time. Huge PB, great swim, shows that he can do it in a final under pressure. And let's face it, we've got a few events with the men's event that we're not taking people. That might just get him on the team yeah. if the selectors look at that. Will, that was still a very impressive swim despite missing that qualifying time. A huge personal best. How are you feeling? Oh, very tired. You know, the initial <laughs> response is to feel pretty disappointed, but it's a personal best. And it's a fun event, so yeah, I am, I am stoked. Of course, you know, you would want to qualify for that Paris Olympics team, but you can't be disappointed with the qualifying time. We know you have the 400 metre medley coming up later this week on Saturday. How are your preparations going to be between now and then? What are you going to be doing over the next few days? Oh, just to regather myself, you know, it's a completely different event, so, um, you know, got to go back into the pool and change the rates and everything, but really not change too much, just get, get have another shot of it on Saturday. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing you race on Saturday, Will. All the best. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ah. After withdrawing from two events earlier this week and being disqualified in the women's 100 metre butterfly. Away in the final of the women's multi-class 100 metres breaststroke. And as you saw, there's a lot of SB14 swimmers here, including Leon Hart and Van Rysbrook going for those qualifying times. And it's a strong start by Kira Stevens in lane number four. She's an SB9 swimmer. The qualifying time she's hunting 116.73. Stevens looking excellent in that first lap, very relaxed. She trains at Southport and did have a training partner in Chelsea Hodges until she announced her retirement a few weeks ago due to knee injury. So Stevens will turn in front of lane four in 35.69. Lynn Hart and Van Rieswijk almost touched the wall together in their SB14 category. 
Stevens, who grew up idolizing Liesl Jones, trying to bring it home in the back half of this breaststroke. Kira Stevens hoping to secure her spot in our Paris Paralympic team. Her ultimate goal in swimming, of course, is to have a Paralympic gold medal around her neck. But in order to do that, she needs to swim her qualifying time of 116.73. Won two bronze medals in Tokyo. Kira Stevens, can she get that time of 116.73? It's going to be close. Just outside the qualifying time. Matt Reiswijk in second in lane five and Leon Hart in third. So no QTs yet for those swimmers. All three athletes missing out on qualifying once again in the finals. They're surely going to be disappointed with that. And here comes Emily Springer Kelly in lane number eight. Big roar as she touches the wall in 145.05. And what about Pasco, the 13-year-old, 128.61. What a future she has from the Gould Swimming Academy in Albury. Kira, I know you were chasing that qualifying time tonight. It didn't quite work out. How was that race for you? Um, yeah, it was tough. Coming into this meet um, with an injury, it's always hard mentally and physically, and I really have just tried to push through these last few weeks of training. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, it wasn't enough tonight. Team still hasn't been decided. It is in the hands of the selectors, and you probably won't know until the final night when the team is announced. How do you keep the positive vibes going until then? Yeah, I mean, the qualifying times are really hard. We have to be third in the world plus 1.2%. So I think that time, last time this morning, would put me second in the world at the moment. So hopefully we, they can see that. And yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. We will keep everything crossed for you that you're another Paralympian come Paris. Good luck. Thank you. Yamaguchi's won gold in the last three world championships and in Tokyo too in the 100 meters breaststroke. Could be a changing of the guards come Paris for Jake Nicol. He's certainly heading in the right direction with his swimming and has been a member of our Australian swim team for four years. Also a key cog in medley relay teams with that strong breaststroke leg. Gold medalist in years gone by as well in the relay. He goes in lane four. Thank you. Away in the final of the men's multi-class 100 metre breaststroke. Liam England in lane number one, Darren Sisman in two. Hodge, the world record holder from last night in three. Nickel showing up already by three quarters of a body length in lane number four alongside Riley Moore in five, Samuel Gould in six, Luke Holder in seven, and Sash Diva in lane number eight. Jake Mickle firing off the blocks, coming up exactly on the 15 metre mark. He knows exactly how to time that start. He knows how to time that turn. He's out in 29.7. It's a good start for Jake Mickle. He's already qualified for this team, but Timothy Hodge from lane three is just half a second out of qualifying this morning for another event in Paris. So Mickle coached by Brian Glass at the Clem Jones Centre right here in Brisbane. You can hear how many people in the stands are cheering him on as he goes in pursuit of another qualifying time. How close can he get to that Yamaguchi world record? I wonder. Clock ticks past one minute here. Mickle bringing it home. And we'll check the time. It's broken the 105 mark. Another qualifying time for Jake Mickle. Hodge finishing strongly in lane number three. Another qualifying time for him. He's just racking them up. And Moore in third. Sisman in fourth. Gould and Holder. And in lane number one, England finishing off in seventh with Sash Diva coming home in lane number eight. Timothy Hodge. Another qualifying time. Is there nothing Timothy Hodge can't do? He's one of Paris Swimming's most versatile swimmers. A triple Paralympic gold medalist. Jake, congratulations once again. Paris and your second Paralympics. Yeah, it's great, yeah. It's a uh, surreal feeling. I'm um, just stoked, yeah. Now, it took a world record in Tokyo to beat you. So silver medalist in Tokyo. What would it mean and what's the drive to try and go one better in Paris? Um, really, it's just, you know, working hard and executing that race plan. Um, I think I didn't execute the race plan in Tokyo as well as I wanted to. Um, but uh, that's what I'm hoping to do when I get to Paris. So. 
And this Paralympic team is looking so strong. What does it mean to you be a part of this team again? Oh, it's great. You know, I miss the guys. You know, we don't spend each other, much time with each other. Um, but uh, it's, it's awesome to go away with them. Um, I know they all put the work in um, and it's inspiring. So. I know that was your final event for this week. So congratulations on a great week. We'll see you on selection night at the end. Well done to you. Thank you so much. Well done, Jake. And then over to you, Tim. Um, I'm losing count of how many events you've qualified for Paris for. World record last night in the 200 IM. Another event to add to your program. Um, yeah, <laughs> thanks. Um, it's, uh, it's definitely kind of a, a surreal feeling, like Jake said. Um, coming in tonight, I was, I was pretty happy with my heat swim backing up off uh, yesterday. And uh, coming in tonight, just the focus was to um, just execute the best race plan possible. And uh, the results will uh, kind of flow on from that. And uh, I'm, I'm very happy to get another time tonight. I uh, wasn't expecting to quite make that QT, but uh, <laughs> very, very happy. Well, hopefully you haven't planned too much sightseeing in Paris because you're not going to get a chance to do any. You're going to be too busy in the pool. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> my, uh, my coach and I have been working really, really hard the, the last probably 12 months on uh, putting up big programs and then uh, really testing my physical and mental limits so that when it comes to uh, Paris, the, I guess the, the number of events will be more or less a walk in the park. But <laughs> it's uh, definitely been a, a hard 12 months, but it's it's... Fingers crossed paying off now. So It certainly is. It's been a wonderful week for you as well. Congratulations, Tim Hodge. Congratulations, Jake. Paralympics, here we come. <laughs> to see him. the lead early but used to him coming home but he's gone out fast as well. Half a second outside world record time. William second from seven third. Oh Chalmers out ahead by half a body length. How fast can he go? Chalmers leading. Exactly. He's getting a little tired. Flint Southam started to come after him and says so William Yang. Chalmers ahead of the field. He's going to win. Long live the king. Pulls through to Paris. 47.75. Carl Chalmers, you have just qualified for your third Olympic team. <laughs> yeah, it's very special. Uh, I'm very, very happy with that. Now, three months ago, you made the move up to Queensland from South Australia to train with Ash Delaney. How has the move, uh, how has the move been for you? Yeah, the move's been it's fantastic, training with one of my best mates as a coach. Um, obviously, a little bit challenging, settling into a new lifestyle so close to Olympics and Olympic trials, but it's been amazing being up there, and I've felt very, very well supported the whole way through. And how is it training with Ash Delaney? Because I know that you are a close friend of his as well as he's, he's coaching you. How do you manage that relationship? Yeah, it's definitely different having one of your very best mates as a coach, but uh, I think very early on we established that coach-athlete relationship and uh, having him, he's obviously been to the Olympics before, had success on the Australian swimming team. So having him in my corner and mentoring me is um, yeah, something that I absolutely love. And let's talk relays. We know that you are such a great leader within Australia, particularly with our young up-and-coming talent. How important are relays to you and are you looking forward to the relay in Paris? Yeah, relays are number one for me always. Um, it's the first or second day at the Olympic Games actually. So um, yeah, I hope obviously last year we were world champions in that and got some amazing young guys coming through and some senior talent. It's amazing to see Jack Cartwright tonight qualify for his first Olympic Games. Someone who I've been through all my junior swimming with. We're the same age, so to be at the pinnacle of our sport together is uh, very, very exciting. Well, we're very lucky to have you, Carl Chalmers. All the best in Paris, of course. Carl Chalmers in the 100 metres freestyle, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. So the swimmers in lanes one and eight. Rachel Watson and Chloe Osborne starting in the pool. The rest on the blocks. Alexa Leary having some assistance in lane four for her 
colours, which is allowed in Paralympic swimming. Away in the final of the women's multi-class 100 freestyle and Alexa Leary targeting her own world record here of 59.64 off to a flying start in lane number four as you'd expect and going with her is Poppy Wilson in lane number five. Alexa Leary just starting to break away from the pack. Emily Beecroft, Poppy Wilson and Jenna Jones all blanket at the moment, but it's Alexa Leary that's going to come into the first turn. And under the world record splits, 28.57 here, it was 28.92 when she broke it on the Gold Coast in April. Can she keep this speed up in the back end? You can see the determination on that underwater shot of Alexa Leary, the 22-year-old from the Gold Coast, opening up a big lead here in the final of the 100 freestyle. Now about to put the head down and hunt that world record again. The time we're looking for 59.64, Alexa Leary digs deep and just missed it. But another qualifying time for Lex. She'll go for gold as favourite in Paris. Another big swim from Poppy Wilson in lane five and Beecroft so consistent in lane three. Rachel Watson coming down into the wall in the last 15 metres in lane one. Remember the qualifying time in the S3 classification, 152.65. She just smashes that, and she'll do it again here. She certainly will. She comes in touching the wall at 132.58, which is faster than this morning's heat swim. It's just very impressive by Rachel Watson. Rachel, congratulations. Two qualifying times today, this morning and tonight. You're off to your third Paralympics. How exciting. Oh, incredibly exciting. I wouldn't even think all those years ago it'd be number three, so... Well, not only two Paralympics before this, but two gold medals as well. How strong is the drive for another gold come Paris? Oh, it's incredibly strong. Um, as far as I know, there's been no female Australian Paris swimmer go three out of three, so I would love to do that. Um, the 50 is my baby, so if I could get that third gold, it would be amazing. Now, I reckon the difference was tonight, because I saw you on day one, and you arrived at the pool, and you'd forgotten your towels, and then you ripped your suit. So did anything... Oh, so that went wrong tonight. Yep. <laughs> uh, first time in my whole swimming career I've had a ripped suit, and it was tonight. So it just shows it happens to all of us, and I think it was just a bit of adrenaline <laughs> as well, which isn't a bad thing. Does Dawn give you any advice? Because I know you're great friends with Dawn Fraser. Does she give you any advice on how to deal with those situations? Um, yeah, she just says a lot, you know, believe in yourself. And she really thinks that, you know, I can do what she did to a Dawny and uh, get three out of three. And I know that herself and a lot of other people will be there with me for that race. And um, hopefully I can make Australia proud and go three out of three. I reckon you can, even if you do rip your suit. Well done, Rachel. Lex, I'll come to you. Congratulations, darling. Just outside your own world record tonight, and you've qualified for another event for Paris. I'm so happy with it, but you know what? I've got better. So, Paris, I'm coming for you. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Now, we can see that that race hurt a lot for you tonight, cramping at the end yes. here. How's the body? Oh, she's hurting. My right side doesn't really want to work with me, but it's all right. I'm good. <laughs> and the other thing is, I heard you say that when you go to Paris, you love crepes and you want to eat crepes in Paris. What is it about crepes? Oh, I just love them, the Nutella crepes, guys. Like, to be honest with you, they're the best. I was there for that race for Rowan's 50 metre freestyle and I remember sitting on the bus with him on the day that the Paralympic Games finished. And it just sunk in in a single moment and he got quite emotional and just said, I'm a gold medalist, and it was a moment that I'll never forget for Rowan Brothers. He's the gentle giant. He's in lane number four alongside Benny Hans, who just flies in every race that he goes in. He's got his pet event coming up tomorrow, the backstroke. Away in the final of the men's multi-class, 100 metres freestyle. Rowan Crothers off to a slow start in lane number four. Benny Hans came up in front and a solid start made in lane number two as well by Ricky Peter. Ben Hans and Tom Gallagher challenging Rowan Crothers into the turn. 
We heard about his ambitious goal, 49 seconds by 2020, but now it's 49 seconds by 2024. Didn't Crothers make up the ground at the back end of that opening 50? Turned in front from Gallagher. They went one, two the other way in the 50 metres earlier in the meet, but it's Crothers asserting his dominance here. The S10 swimmer, the giant of the pool, leading them home, but here come the fast finishers, the like of Gallagher, Hans and Peter, but Crothers is holding them at bay. The big man trying to hit the wall first again. It is Rowan Crothers. It is another qualifying time. Same for Gallagher. They're real medal contenders in Paris in 2024. And Simpson has done it again, the 17-year-old. What a future he has ahead of him. Rowan Crothers, Tom Gallagher and Callum Simpson all swimming underneath the qualifying time again. Rowan must be happy with that swim. He looked very comfortable going down that first 50. Been working very hard with his coach, Kate Sparks, at Yeronga Park. Okay, I'll start with you, Rowan. Congratulations, you've got another event in Paris. Yeah, really excited. The 100 free is my main event. Honestly, the time I did just then, I'm not super happy about. I still think I'm rank one or rank two in the world of that, so I'll take it. But there's a long way to go before I get where I want to be. I know you have very high standards. You've been to two Paralympics, you got two Paralympic gold medals already. So I know that you're going to work hard between now and Paris, but 50 free, 100 free. Yeah, I mean, the sprint double is what I do. Honestly, we've got such incredible competition, not just internationally, but here in Australia, to be able to get up and race with Tommy and seeing Ben swim so fast as well is going to be awesome for that relay. I think it's all about Australia, and we've got a damn good relay coming up in Paris. You certainly do, and you're done for the week, so congratulations. You get to sit back and enjoy. Well done. Thank you very much. I'll come over to you here, Tom. Another event for you, 50 free, 100 free double. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. Um, it's good to have another swim under the belt and then I got the backstroke tomorrow, so um, yeah, we'll move on to tomorrow now. Okay, so just put this one to bed, go. I'm already off to Paris. I've got another event trying again tomorrow. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> I like it. Well done for you. Good luck for tomorrow. And Callum, I'm going to bring you in. One event here, qualified this morning, qualified tonight. You're off for your first Paralympic team. Yeah, so good. I'm so happy. But I couldn't get here without everyone who's here supporting me, my mum. Dad, my coach, Chris Wright, they all being big impact in this, so we all made it together. It is such an incredibly strong Paralympic team. You have such a great bond. What does it mean to you to finally be on this Paralympic team? To be on Paralympic team means to me like the world. Ever since I was young, it's been my dream to make my Paralympic dreams in and out. It's finally reality. It certainly is, and you got the job done tonight. Congratulations. Enjoy Paris. Thank you. Australia's much-loved Susie O'Neill, the only winner of Olympic gold in the women's 200 metres butterfly. That was in 96. Let's see who can advance through. The qualifying time, 207.72. It's a good start by Connor once again. Decker's not far away. Brittany Castelluzzo in lane six. Also up there in the pace battle. And Bella Grant in lane three had the advantage over all of the aforementioned. She turns at the head of the field, narrowly ahead of Abby Connor. And Lizzie Decker's right there with them, as is Castelluzzo. So there's four in the middle lanes, separated by less than half a body length at the moment. Probably not used to seeing Lizzie Decker's this far back in the field at the moment. Bella Grant is having the swim of her life and will lead them out at the halfway mark. It's consistent from the small swim as well. She had a great lead this morning, having to hold on to it. As a young swimmer can produce a performance like this, they have to catch her. That was a great turn by Lizzie Deckers, moving through into second position now and challenging that lead of Bella Grant. Abby Connor just sliding back a little bit. Lizzie looks good. She really serves in this 50 metres. She's going to turn with the lead here. Ahead of Abby Connor and Bella Grant. The magic number, 207.72. Lizzie Deckers turns at the head of the field. Four years ago, it was heartbreak. 
What a way to end the end of this final lap. Decker's lead looks strong. Connor starting to come into it here. Lizzie's got to push hard. She's ahead of the time. I think Lizzie's going to make it to Paris. Four years is a long time, and it's a distant memory now. Welcome to the Dolphins, Lizzie Deckers, and Abby Connor with a super swim as well. They've both made the qualifying time. We've got two individual representatives in the women's 200 fly. Look at Lizzie's face just then. Absolute sheer relief. You can feel it, can't you? You can sense it in the air. It, it was even a hesitation to smile. Can but I believe it? Can, can I, I take a that breath time? In? Yes. Is it okay? I need confirmation. Yes, I'm making it looks again to make sure of that. Lizzie Deckers and Abby Connor, this is a night to remember for both of you because you've just qualified for your first Olympic Games. Congratulations. Now, Lizzie, we'll start with you because we know what your lead into Tokyo was like. 0.14, missing the team for Tokyo and being left behind. We know the last three years for you in particular have been, has been redemption for you and it's really driven you over these last three years. Are you able to give us an insight on what these last three years have been like for you? Yeah, that swim at trials definitely changed me as a swimmer. It was really rough at first, but I think it gave me the drive I needed to actually be a better swimmer and I think I would definitely not be here if that hadn't happened three years ago. And with missing that team, how are you feeling sitting in the call room before you're walking out for the final tonight, knowing that this could be your moment? <laughs> the nerves were there, 100%, but more than anything, um, I think missing the team made me realise how much I love swimming, so I was just so excited to get the chance to come out here and race, and race these girls. It was really fun. <laughs> I think you're the only person in the whole world that would say racing a 200 metre butterfly is fun. But going into Paris later this year, you've swam a time that actually ranks you third in the world. So you could be in contention for a podium finish in Paris. What are the next six weeks going to look like for you? Yeah, that's the goal. You know, I want to go to Paris and I want to be competitive. So the next six weeks, just sharpening. You know, that swim wasn't about time. It was just about getting hands on the wall. So I reckon, yeah, I've got more in me at Paris. It should be fun. We're looking forward to seeing that. And Abby, so is everybody else. We know you're going to be incredible. Abby, now let's speak about what the last 12 months has looked like for you. We're on the Commonwealth Games team together and then in April last year you announced a very short retirement. So tell us what the last 12 months have been like for you. Yeah, look, they've been a bit of up and down. Um, I didn't have the best start to the year, but, um, you know, you wouldn't be here without all the support. You know, all of us swimmers get up here and say, yeah, we have heaps of, like, of support. But really, we, we don't stand here with like the people behind the scenes, like back at home. I can't thank you guys enough. I wouldn't be standing here without them. So, yeah, it's been a whirlwind, but I couldn't believe I'm standing here right now. And I know that you've had a change in lifestyle and a change of coach. You're now up at the Sunshine Coast at the USC Spartans under the guidance of Mick Palfrey. I'm sure you want to send Mick Palfrey a message after all that he has given you over the last 12 months. What would you like to say to your coach? Uh, Mick, thanks for believing in me when no one else did at the time. So I just can't thank him enough for the belief that he has in me. So, yeah. And Lizzie, the support of your family, when you're out there racing, of course, you're trying to get that Olympic qualifying time. But if you think about the last three years in particular, the support of your family have been so incredibly important. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Again, you definitely wouldn't be here without all their support and, you know, getting me through all those rough times and, yeah, getting me here. Race that has been the domain of the great Katie Ledecky for such a long period of time. Ariane, the silver medal winner at the Tokyo Games. Behind Ledecky, she won bronze in Fukuoka 2023. And as I mentioned, Lani is the world short course champ. So we have some wonderful pedigree as we get up towards these longer distances with Ariane and Lani in the middle lanes and she started quickly. Ariane wants her come off record track, which is 8.11 taken off her by Summer McIntosh. That's the first target that we'll look at tonight. 
There's another time, which is 80479, which is Kate Ledecky. Um, we can hope. <laughs> we can hope. Well, Arnie's under. She's under. It's the first 50, so we won't get too excited, but she's under Katie Ledecky's world record pace. She's not mucking around. So once again, I think this is my favourite feature of Ariane, is that it doesn't matter what event it is. It doesn't matter that she's already qualified. It doesn't matter that she's already had a sensational meet. Every time she gets in the water, it is trying to execute the perfect race plan so that she only knows how to swim one way. I'm trying to think, when Katie set this world record, when Katie Ledecky set this world record, it was back in 2016. 8.04.79. So this world record has stood for a long time. Katie Ledecky owns the top 10 performances of all time. At least. At least. <laughs> That's only on the first page. At least. So Arnie is doing something incredibly special so far at the 350 metre mark. She's just backed off ever so slightly, just outside world record pace now. You mentioned the triumph against adversity and perseverance from some of our swimmers this week. And Lani, a case in point. Abby Connor's the same. And Roz touched on that, um, as did Ellie post-race just before. Abby gave the sport away. And then a call from Bronte Campbell came encouraged her to keep on keeping on, and she finds herself heading towards Paris, as is Lani Pallister. So they're two of the wonderful stories to come out of the week. We're halfway through, and Ariane's half a second outside the world record. She is in rare form. And I reckon Lani's just made her move. L Lani's in great shape for her performance based off Ariane's race here. Katie Ledecky negative split this when she broke the world record for the 8.04 time. Keep that in mind. She might have something to give here, Lani. Whether she can bridge this gap is a highly doubtful. But there's the bell. And the crowd lifts for Ariane Titmus, who leads this 800 freestyle time final by a comfortable margin. It's been another brilliant exhibition. This Australian record, Arnie's PB is still in contention. Keep your eye on the clock, 8.13.59. She lifted with that bell. This is a little bit of, okay, we've got 100 to go. Two laps to go. Well, she's put a body length uh, back on this lead against Lani Patterson. She's really kicked in that 50. It's gonna be a great swim from Lani as well. She's got a PB of 8.15.11, Lani. So keep an eye on that Commonwealth record, 8.11.39, and the Australian record, 8.13.59. The Commonwealth record isn't there, but Ariane has won and won decisively. 200, 400, 800, she's the ultimate winner. And Lani Pallister able to qualify here in the 800 metres freestyle as well. Well done to Jamie Perkins. Finishing with an 8.30.18. So just outside her PB. But this is wonderful news. You can tell that the girls have a little bit of fatigue, residual fatigue from the week, which is completely fair enough. Lani thrilled with that. Lani's still got a 1500 to come this week. I think that may be one race that Ariane's happy not to be swimming <laughs> here. Lani and Lani. Lani, wave to, wave to your family, of course. <laughs> But Arnie and Lani, congratulations on the qualifying time. Another event for Paris. Now, Arnie, we'll start with you because it was a pretty big day for you yesterday. World record in the 200 meter freestyle. It was an amazing event that I've watched time and time again. But how has the last 24 hours been for you? Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been nice after last night, but I've just tried to forget about it as much as I could. Um, we had a job here to do tonight. But being completely honest, I'm pretty disappointed with the swim, but... Um, I don't know, we get another chance in Paris to try and do better. Now, this is your third appearance uh, at the trials. You raced in the 400 on night one, the 200 yesterday, the 800 this morning. How's your body holding up? Because you've got the 100 tomorrow. 
Yeah, not too bad. Like, <laughs> only three races, it's not that bad. But um, I'm actually keen for the 100 tomorrow. The pressure's off, a bit of a hit out, two laps, which is nice, um, especially after tonight. Yeah, I'm sure two laps is going to feel very short, especially after tonight, you're right. Lani, how are you feeling after making a qualifying time for Paris in this event? Yeah, as Lani said, it's always good to hit another qual time, add another event to the repertoire. Um, I'm not stoked for that time, but I guess with the week that it's been ups and I guess how emotional I was on night one, I'm happy to just have another event under the belt than represent Australia in six weeks' time. <laughs> You're not as emotional tonight. Maybe you've just gotten used to understanding that you're an Olympian now. Were you going to the Olympics? It's still weird when people say it. Um, and I think Monday was a lot of relief after what I went through in 2021. But um, I'm so grateful to all of my friends and family here. I have Alex Surf Club and then a lot of the girls that I grew up with, my best friend as well. So yeah, so grateful. I'm excited that they get to come and watch. And then also stoked that um, they get the opportunity to watch me in six weeks time on TV as well. All right, well, let's talk about how special this event is for you, because your mum competed at this very event, the 800 metres freestyle, in the 1988 Seoul Olympics. So how does it feel to be swimming, I was going to say walking, but swimming in your mother's footsteps, waves? I'm not really sure how to phrase that. Yeah, I think it's something that I've looked at growing up. Um, she had the 400 as well, and she finaled in both, so it would be cool to replicate that 36 years on but um, I'm very grateful for the path that she set for me and the legacy that she's left for me to be able to continue through now. Absolutely and Arnie I know it's been a huge week for you we've seen lots of vision of your coach Dean Boxall on the stage uh, on the on the screen I should say. Would you like to send a message to Dean after tonight's race? Um, I would like to say don't be too angry at me with the time and um, he actually said to me don't be a small cat and I think I in that race if you get what I'm saying